The following is a program of the Santa Barbara County Education Office. To learn more, visit sbceo.org. Hi, I'm Santa Barbara County Superintendent of Schools, Susan Salcedo, and I am so delighted today to introduce our guest, Mark Boer, who's the art director at the PCPA, Pacific Conservatory Theater in Santa Maria, and also has such an important job of being Associate Dean for Allen Hancock College. Mark, thank you so much for joining us today. It's my pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. It'll be a really wonderful conversation, I know, just from knowing you. I can't wait to share with our audience today your story and the impact that you bring, uh, your leadership and the art that you bring to the community is, is so enormous. I can't wait to go there. Um, but before we do, let's talk about you and your background in childhood. Tell us where you grew up, your childhood, where you went to school. Um, I grew up in the Bay Area of California, but I was born in Nebraska. and. Um, my uh, parents came out to California in the early 60s for teaching jobs. Okay. Uh, and um, But every summer we went back and spent three months on my grandparents' dairy farm. So I always feel like I grew up in part in Nebraska in the Midwest. And uh, But uh, w went to school in Fairfield, California, mm -hmm. went to Solano Community College mm -hmm. uh, growing up, and then uh, eventually got my bachelor's degree at Sacramento State University uh, in drama, which was which was not you know necessarily something that was predicted. I think by my family's history, you know, not a lot of artists or or actors certainly in, in right, my family. Right, right, and but a lot of teachers. And I would say, in talking with you, you do a lot of teaching through through the work that you do too. So while you're an artist, director, and associate dean, I feel like there's just that that core in you that's always teaching and thinking about learning as well. There's certainly an affinity between the artistic impulse and the impulse to communicate, mm -hmm. and, which is teaching. And, and teaching is an art, of course. Of you know, course. The, and both of them you know, have a goal of transforming their audience mm -hmm. uh, for their good. Well, I'd love to, to hear and share with the audience how you did find uh, the theater. Um, you talk about having grown up in farmland and having parents as teachers, but you were an athlete, I think, in school. <laughs> Somehow something turned for you from athletics to, to the theater. What, what happened well, there? Well, you know, it was, it was actually really simple. I, uh, I was a, a pretty good football player, um, not a very good basketball player, even though I was a big guy. But, um, <laughs> and uh, the truth is, uh, the thing that really drew me to the theater was what most of us are looking for, uh, particularly in adolescence, which is acceptance. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I found a group of people who seemed to see me mm -hmm. um, in a way that um, the guys I was playing ball with didn't mm -hmm. really. And, uh, and, and so I went from, you know, being a starting offensive and defensive tackle on the football team. And then in my junior year, I quit wow. and joined the show choir and the dance company and started doing plays, which socially, you know, I wasn't really prepared for what that was going to feel like at my high school because it wasn't really a cool thing to do. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, but ultimately, uh, you know, that's where I really found my people. And I think that's the best thing that can happen to you as a young person is where you sort of go, here's my affinity group and I have an opportunity to kind of, you know, discover myself and build my talents. Yeah, so finding your people, that sense of belonging, I think that's that's so great. So then somehow you found yourself here in Santa Maria and connected with PCPA. So from college to here, could you trace for us that, that path and journey? That's funny because there's a, there's a really direct path okay. in that um, I went to graduate school at UC Irvine, got my Master of Fine Arts degree um, with a wonderful actor named Kitty Bailey. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we were actually classmates for three years there at UCI. And uh, right after graduate school, I had the good fortune of being hired at the Oregon Shakespeare Festival as an actor. I worked there for three seasons, did 11 plays for them. And, and that's where I started both teaching and doing some fight direction, mm -hmm. choreographing violence for the stage, mm -hmm. another little skill that I picked up. Um, and um, 
And then I was, I had moved back to the Bay Area and was actually serving as interim artistic director at the California Shakespeare Festival um, in Berkeley and Orinda, okay. uh, back in the Bay, w which was home for me. And, um, and I got a call from Kitty Bailey saying, there's a conservatory director job open at PCPA, aren't you applying for it? And, uh, and my dear wife, Lindy, was uh, pregnant with our son, Jesse, at the time. And I thought, oh, a steady job in the arts um, on the beautiful Central Coast sounded really attractive. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but you know, my, my entire professional career up to that point had been 10 years in the professional theater. I hadn't really been, you know, distinctly in the educational side. Right. So in a sense, you've had perfect training all along that got you right to where you are, or where you started and where you are now. Mm -hmm. And uh, Kitty Bailey, you've mentioned, and she's such an icon in the community, and how neat to have gone to school with her at Irvine and then found your way together here. Right, still yeah. colleagues. Still colleagues, all these years, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So for, I know those of us who, those of the audience who are viewing, I'm sure has heard of PCPA or attended any of the, any one of the amazing uh, shows that you put on, but um, in case there's somebody who doesn't know much about PCPA, can you share about it, its history, and, mm. and its place here in the community? Well, that's a big story, of course, mm -hmm. and I'll try and give the, the quick version of it. Um, PCB, of course, is uh, the Pacific Conservatory Theater. Conservatory is right in our middle name yes. because we are a, a professional theater company and a two-year training program for actors and technicians. Mm -hmm. And then we also have year-round professional internships for uh, early career theater professionals. Um, the foundation of it, though, goes back to 1964, when Walter Conrad, who was then the superintendent president of Allen Hancock College, had a vision mm -hmm. for starting a drama department on the college campus. And that really grew out of his commitment to, be, to have the college be um, have a central role in the cultural life mm -hmm. of the community because the thing that we have to remember is in 1964 there were only just about 20,000 people living in Santa Maria. It right. was a very small community and um, Walter Conrad felt like it was the responsibility of the college to provide um, culture. Mm -hmm. uh, and so he hired Donovan Marley, uh, who um, people can forget was only 26 years old when wow. he was hired as the director of drama at Allen Hancock College. Mm -hmm. But by the summer of 1965, um, Donovan had gathered 23 drama students and they put on a season of plays in a little barracks building at the old Hancock Field. Mm -hmm. And and that, you know, really there's a, there has been nonstop production going since that since summer then. season, that first production of All My Sons through today, um, has been sort of a continuous and contiguous growth. Um, and, um, you know, starting out in that little barracks building, of course, the Marion Theater was built in 1968, which has been our artistic home since then. The Severson Theater, a small black box, was added in 1993. Um, and most of our friends in the community are familiar with um, our relationship with the Solvang Theater Fest. So every summer we take four plays down to the beautiful Solvang Festival Theater. And, and those are the, the venues then? Those are right, those, those, those three venues. theaters. Mm -hmm. um, and occasionally we produce, you know, we, uh, PCPA has toured shows with the USO, you know, back wow. uh, in the 80s. Um, we've done, we've occasionally taken a show um, up to Arroyo Grande or down to Santa Barbara, but really home is the Marion Theater and the Solvang Festival. Love Theater. the history, and as part of your role, it sounds like you're part historian too. You yeah, keep track of all sure. that has happened. Well, we're the you know we're you end up. I think it's true in any organization. Those of you who have been with the company for a while, you end up being the torchbearer. Right? You know the sort of institutional <laughs> memory, and so it's been part of what's been great about uh, my role has been getting to be with PCPA um, during the 50th anniversary uh, season, yes. just back in 2013, and so um, that was an opportunity to not only learn a lot myself, but to meet a lot of the people who were uh, at PCPA in the 60s and 70s and hear their stories. And so it has sort of made me a little, it fueled my passion. I love the, it. The well, we were, we were able to talk about that anniversary celebration in person of just a few, I think, months back. Mm -hmm. But it's such a special occasion. Share with others what that sort of felt like and looked like, because especially because people came back from all the years. Well, it, it was amazing. And um, of course, PCPA has probably 10,000 alumni uh, who have been through uh, the training programs or been in the summer company. But uh, in 2013, we had just a sliver of those. Only about 350 of them <laughs> came back. That's um, and, uh, you know, uh, folks from across the decades, going all the way back to 1968, uh, mm -hmm. but basically through every decade we've been in operation. Um, 
the former artistic directors, Donovan Marley was there, Laird Williamson, Jack Schaus, you know, the real heroes of uh, the company. And the thing that was most gratifying about it, I think, though, to me, was that the alumni returned and um, said, you know, it still feels like home. Mm -hmm. um, there's something about the combination of aesthetic excellence and um, educational passion uh, and the, the synthesis of that, mm -hmm. that really creates a kind of magic, the energy that that brings. Um, and the fact that the people who have a long history with the company said, this still feels like the PCPA I remember. That must of feel course, so was, good. You know, really gratifying. Yeah, yeah. and, and uh, many of the alum have gone on to do major, major things, mm -hmm. um, but my understanding is they often do attribute their kind of baseline from PCPA and what yeah. they learned. I think I mm -hmm. think the the professionalism, the integrity, the hard work, the skills and and really having a, an opportunity then to take all of the skills that you might learn in a studio and immediately apply them, yeah. you know, to a professional level production um, uh, in front of an audience, and the audience is a big teacher about what's working and what's not working That's in right. the moment. You know, so <laughs> in that, the moment, that professional practice, you know, really makes a huge difference for people. Yeah. Well, Mark, you said a moment ago about the conservatory in a two-year program. Students are in. You've had ten thousand plus alum. It sounds like at this point is what you mm -hmm. said. But at this time in the program, in a two-year program, how many students are part of that? And and it's not just about acting. I mean, there's so much more. Um, and I say just because with the, you know, I, it's sure. not at all. Um, well, I think, you know, acting is the thing that people think of first because it's the it's their first apprehension of play going. Right. They, they sit in the theater and they see the actor do their thing. Um, of course, you start to look around about, you know, the clothes the actors are wearing, the lighting that they're under, and the way that it's all managed, and the beautiful scenery that they're on. So we, of course, not only train actors, but technicians for the theater. And um, so, yes, there's two-year training for actors and two-year training for technicians. And the technicians, there are lots of disciplines within the technical theater that people might not necessarily mm -hmm. appreciate. Um, right. So not only lighting and sound and scenery and costumes, um, but things like stage management, uh, production management, um, things inside costumes like costume crafts. There's this discipline that makes things that people wear but aren't necessarily fabric or sewn. So things like shoes hats or and, armor or right. shoes mm -hmm. or belts. And, mm -hmm. um, and, um, and so every year we accept about 32 actors into the program. Mm -hmm. This wow. year we will have seen 600 audition for wow. those 32 uh, spots. Um, and we accept 12 technicians in the program uh, every year. So that means we have about 24 technicians at any one time and about 60 plus actors in the mm -hmm. program. And then we usually have about 25 professional interns who are with us in all of our disciplines from musical direction to um, stage management to carpentry. Um, and uh, so in total, this, what we call the student company, they're all enrolled in Allen Hancock College courses yes. um, that are career and technical education courses. Um, we have usually about 100 to 105 students. And then in the summer, we get bigger. Mm -hmm. We have about 120 students in the program. And then about 50 full-time staff. So right here in Santa Maria, you know, a, a resident company of artists of about 150 people. Wow, that's incredible. I want to talk about how you think through what a season might look like. Before we go there, I want to I just want to say one thing about the Hancock College relationship with PCPA because it is, my understanding is very unique, most unique, maybe the only kind like this in the United States is my understanding. Mm -hmm. Can you say just what that is and then we'll go on to that season? No, I, I, think, I think that's correct. Mm -hmm. I think um, PCPA is the only program of its kind at a community college where you have a fully professional, kind of standalone, not-for-profit theater company right. that's absolutely integrated into a career and technical education program. Um, and there, there really is no dividing line between us as as Allen Hancock College program mm -hmm. and as professional theater company. And that synthesis is really unique. Um, it's not only what makes us um, unique and helps us function operationally, but it's also really unique as a training model uh, to have this quality of experience for students yeah. um, when they're paying community college tuition is really, you know, 
uh, extraordinary. It is extraordinary, such a gem, truly. So let's talk about a season. You know, there's been many seasons. You've been part of many of them. Mm -hmm. um, and you clearly have to decide and think through how are you going to, what, how are you going to put that together? Some things I would imagine are maybe partially or all entertainment, but also impactful in other ways, pushing ideas forward. Mm -hmm. There's a, a huge array of thinking, I think, that goes behind that. I can't, um, I can't begin to describe it. Can you help describe what, what goes into that it, kind of it's thinking? It's pretty complicated, mm -hmm. and it's something that I and uh, the rest of the leadership team at PCPA spent a lot of our time doing is considering um, what the work will be. Of course, we're always doing it while we're producing a full season of plays. So we're <laughs> right. right now planning season 55. We're sort of in the final uh, planning stage for what will be our next season. Um, we like to have the plays chosen about 18 months before we produce them. Ah. Um, and so it's a relatively long planning arc. Um, and we're basically considering three things. Um, what's the artistic merit of the individual work of art? What is the financial cost of doing it? And what do we think it will do for us on the revenue side mm -hmm. at the box office? Mm -hmm. And then what does it mean for us educationally? Um, how does it contribute to the um, dramatic literacy of our students and the cultural literacy of our community? Right. And So let me just stop for a second. Sure. So that is... So the artistic piece, the business piece, and then an educational piece. Yes. Those are some of the three. So those are yeah. three of the sum. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, and, good. And then, you know, and then looking at how those, th you know, the, the sort of three legs of that stool, how the, those balance one another across a season of plays. Because as you were indicated, that there might be a show where you say, this is going to be amazing at the box office. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to do this fantastic show. We think the community is really going to respond to it. It's going to be popular. They're going to come. Right. Um, and... Um, uh, and it's going to be entertaining. And I, I don't want to undersell the power of entertainment. Mm -hmm. You know, when if you can positively divert someone from the care and stress of yes. their life for two hours, you know, the, I think there are times when any of us as a person, you think, if I can lift my friend's spirit for a couple of hours, that was a good day. Absolutely. Um, I think so. I, so I don't think of it as just entertainment. Mm -hmm. To entertain is a great thing. Mm -hmm. um, but there are certainly plays where we want to be more um, uh, probative, um, maybe even provocative, that we want to inspire people to think and feel deeply, or maybe to um, have a pathway to something that they otherwise don't have access to. Because the arts have are always our bridge to an experience that we otherwise don't have an access point to. Right. And so that's the unique thing that, you know, first a playwright and then a, the people who, who bring that play to life, one of the things that they're doing is they're, they're giving us, um, they're opening a door into a world that we don't, uh, that we might otherwise uh, not be able to enter. And I think what that does ultimately is that builds community, mm -hmm. you know, and it certainly, when you start to say, I, I don't know that I would have understood that story in, in such a personal, deep, nuanced, vibrant way until I saw a play that was about that. And suddenly that coworker or that acquaintance in the community or that person that I think is my adversary, you know, I see them in a little more complicated and hopefully empathetic way. Mm -hmm. You know, so there, there's that sort of mission about what art does in a community that, that's also part of season selection as well. That's great. Very profound. So there's so much that goes into a season. You said you're working on season 55 now, mm -hmm. and you're on which season now? Season 54. 54, so you're working on the next season now, months ahead of when yes. it'll actually happen. Yeah. And before leaving that topic too, I would assume that you think differently in terms of the location, the San, the Solving Theater, the Santa Maria Hancock Theater, sure. probably because of different audiences. Mm -hmm. Different mm -hmm. audiences, different technical capacities that mm -hmm. those theater spaces have, um, different times of year. The, the summer season tends to be um, slightly lighter fare, mm -hmm. um, and um, uh, so yeah, there, it, there's a, a lot of different factors that go into season selection yeah. for sure. That's great. Thank you for sharing all of that. Very insightful. And I want to turn now to something you just said a moment ago to had to do with the arts pretty much unlocking um, thinking and uh, approaching things in different ways that other things can't do, you know, the, the, something that the arts just can really inspire. So let's turn that to children, mm -hmm. students, kids. Um, I know PCPA goes into the schools, you're, you advocate for the arts in schools. Say a little bit about what it is that you do 
and then maybe say why you do it. Uh, we do um, not only have a pretty robust student matinee program where um, local students come to the theaters on the Hancock campus and see plays there, but we have an outreach program where we yes. take schools um, to to them, which I think is really important for that that they see how story can even you know transform their cafeteria or their library or their classroom or their mm -hmm. gymnasium um, uh, into uh, into a place of wonder, mm -hmm. um, and uh, and the interesting thing is it's a big responsibility because. Um, I think a lot of people in our, a lot of young people in our community see their first play at their school right. through a PCPA production. And so we want it to be excellent. Mm -hmm. We want people to say, wow, this live theater thing is amazing. Um, and, and I guess, yes, because they're our future audience, but really, ultimately, it's for them. Mm -hmm. It's uh, because all of us who are making theater now at some point were that kid right. who said, I see something about myself, my life experience reflected in this story being told. And so one of the, um, sometimes it's overt and sometimes it's a little covert, but one of the, the messages that's always under storytelling is that you can be seen and heard. Mm -hmm. um, that the thing that's going on inside you, the experience that you're having in the classroom and at home, you know, there's a word for that. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a way, there, there might be a color for it. There might be a shape for it. Um, you might find um, a way of expressing your unique um, story mm -hmm. um, through an artistic medium. And, um, and we know that you know, people are going, they're looking for a way to connect, mm -hmm. to be authentically recognized uh, as themselves, um, to have a way of being truthful about their thoughts and emotions. And um, so if we can give young people a palette of expression, um, uh, they're, I think, going to tend to express that in healthier ways, mm -hmm. um, ways that build up connection and community and build themselves up. Um, because all of us have seen the destructive ways that, uh, that the longing for that can play out. And so I think all of us as educators are want, wanting to say, here's this amazing palette of tools where you can realize you know, your own potential and that you can be seen and heard. And, um, and of course, you know, we want young people to be discovering their voice. Mm -hmm. And so I think uh, the theater is one of the ways that that can happen. I love that and appreciate too, you were talking about setting and how important that is and the place of wonder it could be at a library, cafeteria, it could be in someone's under their bed as they're reading some, <laughs> a story, but also in, in the theater, in one of your theaters as well and, and all that it can provide for a student to think differently and connect differently perhaps. Um, and I think about too, you, you've done some advocacy work on behalf of the arts, national I believe in Washington DC and w tell us why that is so important to you to do well in part because um, and of course this is my bias but we need the arts as a civilization um, it's what makes us a civilization and not uh, you know I think the thing that makes us a community of civilized people and not just cohabitants mm -hmm. is the fact that we transmit our values, our ideas, our feelings, our connections um, via um, artistic expression, by dialogue, in, in various forms. And um, But the interesting thing is, so while we need it, we don't always want it. Mm -hmm. And so I think those of us who are artists, those of us who are in arts education are always going to have to be advocates for why it's important. Mm -hmm. uh, and, um, you know, because the, I wish we always had an appetite for the stuff that's good for us, <laughs> but, <laughs> but we don't. And, you know, and you put yourself in this precarious situation where you can, you know, kind of, uh, it, it can feel a little pretentious to sort of say, I know what's good for you. Mm -hmm. And, and what you need is, um, but, uh, but I think when you're an educator and when you're an artist and when you have something on offer, re really it's just sort of saying, there's this beautiful thing that can enhance your life, that can build us up as individuals and as a, a community, and, um, and we need to remember it. Because the funny thing is, I always say to people, your experience today going to the theater is better than your best memory of it. Mm. 
because there's something also about live performance. Um, don't you always leave a play and say, I, I knew I was going to like it, but it was so much better um, to be here. And, and actually something shook or changed in me that I didn't even think was, I was going to make available today. You know, I was coming in from work and I was just going to see this story. Um, and then something wonderful occurred. Mm -hmm. And um, so we have to do a little persuasion to get people into the room where it happens. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, um, and so it's always going to be a shared job of not only making the work but but advocating for it as well. But the bottom line to me though is the excellence of the art mm -hmm. is always the best advocate. So my first job is to make great theater. Mm -hmm. That's it. It's its own best advocate. Well, I would argue back that you're a really great advocate for that too. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so it's a tie. <laughs> no, but I what you articulated as to why the the reason for advocating it makes makes such good sense and I also want to just say thank you for for doing that on behalf of children and youth and and even adults in our community you talk about society and who we are as people I mean truly it's it really does make an impact and we do I want to thank you for yeah. that truly yeah. when when you look back over your your years at PCPA are there any special highlights one or two I'm sure there's a million but yeah. one or two special ones Oh, of course, you know, and um, uh, I'll, I'll, one leaps to mind, I'll say that one, and okay. there, there are 10,000 sure. others. We produced a world premiere of a play by Jose Cruz Gonzalez called The Heart's Desire, and it happened to be a story about um, a uh, Mexican-American World War II veteran, and uh, returning to his hometown after the war, and the... Um, struggle for acknowledgement um, as as a full citizen um, for so many who have gone and um, served our nation and then come back and been marginalized as citizens and to tell that story in a in a very personal way um, and uh, as part of that production, we did some outreach um, to some of our local veterans groups, to the American GI Forum, and, uh, and we ha there was a night when we had a big group of um, uh, Hispanic Latino vets uh, who came to the show with their families. Wonderful. And then we did a talk back with the cast and with the playwright afterwards. And, um, uh, and I remember after that night and hearing some of those veterans who just enjoyed f seeing their story and feeling um, validated and represented and celebrated um, uh, and, and saying, you know, on behalf of my family, thank you for telling this story, for having that be among the things that's getting to the stage here in Santa Maria. Right. And I remember standing outside with some of my colleagues and saying, this is the feeling that I want to have wow. all the time, doing a, a new work of art that really resonates with our community and has people feeling like they are seen, heard, honored, celebrated. You know, and then I think for others in the, in the community who said, I didn't know this story. Mm -hmm. I, that's that's not something that that has occurred to me before. Um, you know, those are really special moments, and you know, and happily, that's one of thousands. You know, um, and uh, and so that's that's the kind of thing that keeps you going back to work because a lot of it is just plain hard work. You know, right. but um, right. but there's uh, there's lots of you know really fantastic. Well, thank you for sharing that special moment with all of us and. I have to tell you, it's just an honor and privilege. I think this is a truly a special moment for me to be able to share your story uh, with the audience here in the community. You impact so many through your leadership and your thoughtfulness and your your story about belonging, I think, is something that probably rings through in so many things about the, with what you do um, and, and why you do it and how. So thank you so much, Mark. Really appreciate it. Thank you. I'm Santa Barbara County Superintendent of Schools, Susan Salcedo. Thank you so much for joining us today for this edition of Local Leaders.